plan for the, uh, for, the, for the first half of this lecture is just to play some more with uh, this construction I gave earlier, the homogeneous coordinate ring. So, uh, R uh, and its uh, Hilbert series. Right, and uh, so the point is this gives a very easy uh, definition of x, uh, of the dimension of x and the degree of x. So they're just, uh, you know, how this, Lillian, how this Hilbert series grows. So these are sort of measures of how big x is, obviously. <coughs> And then, uh, in particular for a curve, I'm going to finally get to the point where I can say that if uh, x, uh, so uh, x a curve, so curve just means the dimension of x is 1, but I also have irreducible. If x is a curve, uh, then, uh, and f e in pn, a hypersurface of degree E, so let's have a curve x of degree d. Then when I do x intersect f e, I'm assuming that uh, uh, f e does not contain any components of x. So, so this is a finite set of points, and this is d e points with multiplicity. Right, so there's an easy part of this and the harder part, and then uh, if x is a non-singular curve, then this uh, this says that sum of sum over points p and x of the valuation at p of f e is d e. Right, so uh, you know this is this is of course related to Bezu's theorem. But it's also going to also give uh, most of our room and rock for curves. Okay, so that's the, that's the plan. <coughs> so, uh, uh, I remind you that there's a, this Hilbert function. So this is um, uh, the dimension over the field K of the finite dimensional vector space, K homogeneous, homogeneous coordinate ring of X. So in degree M. So this is a graded ring. It's a direct sum of uh, m, let's say, m greater than or equal to zero. <coughs> and I'm, this is just how, how much of the ring there is in each, in each dimension, in each uh, degree. So this is, uh, if you want, this is the same thing as the number of linearly independent forms on x. of degree m, so forms of degree m. Right, so, uh, you know, I'm taking x naught up to xn, I'm taking all monomials of degree m, and then I'm modulo ix, modulo the linear, m modulo whatever linear combinations and vanish on x and then I'm counting them. So I'm just counting this number. Counting the number of linearly independent forms on x. Right, so we saw this is called, uh, we, we, write, we write pm of x for this. It it, of course it depends on x and it also depends on the embedding of x into pm. 
uh, and then we define PT, PX of T to be the sum of these PM X of T to the M, summed over M greater than or equal to zero to infinity. Right? Now I hope you've I hope you've done the exercises. If you've done the exercises, then you have a good idea for how these uh, for how these things work. So uh, you know this might be, uh, e.g., this might be, uh, you know something like one plus three t over minus t squared plus t to the t cubed over one minus t to the fourth or something. And if it's, it's if it's of this. If it's of this shape, then it says something definite about x, about, uh, about how many, about which projective space it's embedded in, about how many equations you need to define it, and, uh, and actually much more about the homological algebra of, of the embedding. Right? So, uh, you know, I gave you quite a number of exercises on the example sheet, and if you've done them, then you'll understand perfectly well what this is about. <coughs> Okay, <clears throat> so the result was that this, uh, the result was that Px of t is of the form a numerator divided by 1 minus t to the power of n plus 1. So I'm writing, uh, I'm writing capital N here, and I'm writing little n here. So uh, I, can, uh, I can choose this so that the numerator is, uh, you know, a naught a naught plus a one t plus plus a you know some k doesn't really matter some l t to the l right and I can choose it so that this is not divisible one minus t does not divide no, n n n no. right these a i's are in uh, are, are in z and you know they can be positive or negative. <coughs> Right? I can choose it so that 1 minus t that doesn't divide n, because then I just de decrease this. So this is just completely formal properties of modules over polynomial rate. There's absolutely no content to this. I gave the proof about three weeks ago, and it's all very, very easy stuff. Right? And the co consequence, so, the, so we're interested in uh, two numbers here. So this defines two numbers, the dimension of n, the dimension of x is this n, and the degree of x is uh, the sum of the ai's, right, and that's the same thing as this polynomial numerator evaluated at t equals 1. Right? So if I, put, if I put t equals 1 in here, I'm just taking the sum of these coefficients, each, with, each multiplied by 1. And because I'm assuming 1 minus t does not divide the numerator, this is, a, this is not 0. <coughs> right? And so, uh, and, and then... Um, <coughs> P M of X for M large. So, so, so this M large means M greater than M naught, and I can't be I can't really be bothered to tell you what M naught I'm taking here, right? But if you take, for example, something like this L plus N plus one, that should be enough. But it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to use this for for m very large. This is equal to, um, <coughs> uh, you know, a sum of the coefficients ai times binomial coefficients t plus m minus ai. Uh, plus n plus n plus 1, n plus 1. <coughs> Right? It doesn't really matter what these are. I'm just saying I take, I, I just calculate what the coefficient of t to the power of m is in this power series. So if the numerator weren't there, if there were just one, I just get one of these uh, binomial coefficients. I've just got some some sum of these binomial coefficients. Anyway, uh, this is equal to for 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 
for m very large, this, is, this has the asymptotic form d times m to the power of n divided by n factorial. Right? So the n factorial is just the, uh, uh, these, the, pro the things that appear in this, in this n. So, uh, you know, for example, I'm sorry, I've got this wrong. So it's nice to know your mistakes are recorded on videotape for eternity. Okay, so, uh, so in particular, in particular, this, uh, this thing I want here, that uh, x is a curve of degree d, happens if and only if this P, pm, pm of x is equal to dm plus constant. for all m greater than m0. <coughs> yes, so uh, when, when x is a curve, this n is equal to 1, and so this is a, the leading term here is this degree term. But if you think about what's in there, it's actually an equality. It's not, sorry, plus lower order. Right. So, so when, when, m, when m gets large, this, uh, this function here is a polynomial in m, and it's a polynomial where the leading term is this, this number. Right? This is an integer. <coughs> Just d is degree. Yes. <coughs> okay. So, so what? So, uh, you know, I explained, when I was proving this result about the Hilbert series, I, I made various comments about this being very simple algebraic trick. But we're, just, we're just using these generating series. There's basically no, nothing difficult to do. It's all very, very simple algebra. So I want to make some consequences of this. And the first consequence is just very, very obvious. So I want to take x in Pn irreducible. And I want to take f uh, e a hypersurface of degree e, uh, not containing not containing x. I want to, uh, and I also want to assume that x intersect Fe is y is irreducible, and and the ideal, and I y equals the ideal of x plus Fe right is radical. Right, so, uh, so, you know, I mean, the picture is, here's my x, and here is, I'm cutting it. And I'm trying to avoid cutting it something like this, so that every point of intersection is a point of higher contact. So this is, this is not, not reduced, not, not radical. Right, so the good picture, the good picture is, here is my x, and here's my f, and... I'm cutting it here, y. Right? Then, so because I'm saying y irreducible, it can't, it can't, this can't be zero dimensional. A zero dimensional set would be some finite set of points. Uh, I want it to be irreducible. Then y is a variety of dimension. Well, x had dimension n, so, so let's say dimension n and degree d 
then y is a variety of dimension uh, n minus 1. I've taken something of dimension n, and I've cut it by one equation, so this is what you expect, and degree and degree d times e. Right? And so uh, this, is, uh, this is easy. I'm not, I'm, not, uh, I'm not doing anything clever here. I'm just saying uh, the, uh, the, 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 the reason this works is because here is, this is the same trick as used in the, pr in the proof of this stuff about Hilbert series. So here is k homogeneous of x. Right? And where is k homogeneous of y? Well, according to this condition here, I'm assuming that the ideal of y is just the ideal of x plus uh, f of e. And this means that if I write f e here, I've got k homogeneous of x here. <coughs> and the, the ho homogeneous coordinate ring of y is just the quotient by a principal ideal. So if you ask how much of this in degree m, here, then I've, I'm, I'm taking this from degree m minus e, right? And then when I sum, so how, how should I say this? Uh, if I write p m of x, right? And then I ask how much of it comes from my multiplication. Uh, so this is, so uh, you know, minus p m minus e plus p m is p uh, m of y. <coughs> right, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm not supposed to worry about this when m is negative because I'm only thinking of what happens when m, m gets large. Right, so when I sum this over all m, the thing uh, times t to the m, then the thing I get is um, that the Hilbert series, the Hilbert series of x, times 1 minus t to the e. Right, so in degree, in de the, the coefficient in degree m here is this thing, and then I have to multiply by the coefficient of t uh, minus t times the coefficient of m minus e. So that's exactly the, like these games you were playing with, uh, if you did the exercises, you played with these Hilbert series. Right, and so I had this numerator. This guy here was numerator of 1 minus t to the n plus 1. And I've come along and I've multiplied this by 1 minus t to the e. Right, and so, and so this is just uh, the same numerator times 1 plus t plus t squared plus t to the e minus 1 divided by 1 minus t now to the power of n. Right, I'm just taking out one of the guys from the bottom and using it to divide into there to, get, to give this um, thing which is like a cyclotomic polynomial. <coughs> right, and it's the same numerator. So if you, if you now if I, set, if I set t equals 1 in this numerator, I'm, I'm just setting, so numerator, so set, t equals 1 in numerator to get, so the, the numerator that corresponds to x of 1 times e. Right, and that's the end. That, that, that's all there is to do. <coughs> okay, so, uh, you know, this is a little bit cheap because I'm uh, the... Uh, I'm assuming that y is irreducible and uh, y is uh, radical, so I don't have to worry about how to interpret the image. The image is di just directly this homogeneous coordinate ring. Right, but with a little bit of care, you can make the same thing, uh, uh, say, say this thing, uh, where, wherever I had to tell you. Okay, I, I rubbed it out already. So if x is a curve of degree d,
So this is in Pn still. And Fe is a hypersurface. Then uh, the thing I'm expecting is that x intersect Fe. Uh, I, want, I want it to be a finite set. Right, and then I want it to uh, sum of multiplicities equals uh, DE. Right, and uh, you know I have to, I can't just write uh, K homogeneous of the quotient because this, uh, you know, I might have lots and lots of these singular points and so on in the intersection. Right, but I'm not going to worry too much about this. So why is this, um, so the thing I'm assuming is that P M of X is this D M plus a constant for M greater than M zero. <coughs> so this means when I do, I, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to think about taking K X, K homogeneous of X. Right, and dividing out by F E times K homogeneous of X. Right, so uh, I'm assuming this F E uh, does not contain. So the thing I'm really assuming is that F E is uh, not a zero divisor of. Uh, k homogeneous of x. Right? So this happens if and only if uh, Fe does not contain any component of x. <coughs> right, then uh, what can we say? Well this one is here is, so if I take, and then there's a, a quotient. So we'll watch the right for the quotient. Let me write uh, Right, so in, d uh, in degree m, I have this amount, and in degree uh, m minus e, I have this amount. So here the quotient has dimension is a vector space of dimension, of di dimension d times e. So you know this is this is true for all uh, for all m greater than greater than some m naught. So this is eventually true. So this implies, of course, that uh, this implies. that uh, x intersect f e is a finite set. Right, because otherwise this is some algebraic variety and uh, you know it's sort of sitting, it's some, it's some algebraic variety sitting in space. When I re restrict polynomials to it, uh, if it's some positive dimensional variety then I certainly get uh, uh, and some series that goes to infinity, that, that, that gets larger and larger. So, 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 so the point is this is bounded. So, uh, so here's, so, you know, here's projective space, here's my x, and then here, here I'm writing Fe. Right, and there's some finite set of points here. So, uh, you know, we're going to change coordinates. Uh, so, choose coordinates. So that uh, no points of this set are in are in x not equals zero. So I'm, I can choose coordinates here, and I'm, I'm choosing them so that uh, you know um, I 
didn't think about this before I draw the original thing, but here's x0 equals 0. Right, so there's a hyperplane, h, h0 there, and uh, just because, because there are only finitely many points here, I can easily wiggle it so that it doesn't meet any of them. And so then the whole intersection, the whole of the intersection takes place takes place in x naught inside affine inside sorry this is still n right so this is on the one hand this is projective space n with x naught not equal to zero right on the other hand it's uh, affine space with coordinates uh, x1 over x0, xn over x0. And uh, what is this? Uh, what is this quotient? So uh, I've got uh, I've got the ideal of x, and I've got uh, this hypersurface Fe, <coughs> and I can take. Um, so I want to take the ideal of x naught. So that's just obtained from i x. I take all the things in i x and I just set x naught equals one. So, so all of this is just uh, set x naught equals one. Right. So uh, so I've got this i, I x naught and I've got f e of uh, with. x not set equal 1. <coughs> and, uh, uh, and the point is, so, uh, so, so now I have, so if I now do i x naught plus this f, let me write this f naught. <coughs> right, this is contained in k of x1 up to xn. So I'm, uh, I'm just keeping the same notation for the coordinates with x not set equal 1. So this is an ideal defining a finite set. <coughs> right, so, so now all of these all of these points are contained in this uh, and so so What's an ideal defining a finite set? So let's give the finite set a name. It's P1 up to P. Uh, you know, I always have this trouble. Uh, K L M N. You know, you know, R or something. I don't know. <coughs> so let's choose this so that P I is not equal to P J. Right, and then I've got these these maximal ideals M I equals the ideal of pi. Right? So we know these are all just of, this is just, uh, you know, x equals, x1 equals a1, xn equals an. <coughs> so the, an ideal defining a finite set So this means that this, uh, this ideal this ideal, which at the moment I'm calling x0 plus f, f0. So, uh, um, it's contained in the product of mi, i equals 1 up to r, right? Because I've, I've decided that, uh, that each of these points, pi, is contained in uh, the, uh, the variety of this thing. And then by the Norstellens Act, it, this contains product of mi to some power n. So I can, uh, so, 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 sorry, um, uh, ni. Right, this is by the Norstellens Act.
right? Because if I take um, if I take anything uh, if I take any of these if I take any of these uh, for for example if I take x1 minus a1 here in this uh, in this ideal of of mi, then it vanishes on the point at the point p1. So it vanishes on the ideal defining by this, and so some product of it is contained in uh, some power of this. So some power of any of these things is contained in there. Right? And now, so the point is these ideals are co-prime. Uh, co-prime, uh, sorry, sorry, these are strongly co-prime, I should say. So this means that mi plus mj is the whole ring. Yeah, if I've got two, if I've got two different points in space, then I can find a function that vanishes on one and doesn't vanish on the other. Right, and so, uh, and then I, if I adjust this, I can find a function that uh, I can find the, um, you know, here, here is here is a, for God's sake, <clears throat> here's a function that takes a value zero at this point and one at this point. If I take one minus that function, then it does zero at this point and and, uh, and sorry, one at this point and zero at this point. And so the uh, the whole ring, the, the the unit element of the ring, is the sum of something there plus something there, right? And if I, I can take, so if I take, right. so I, I'm doing a general lemma about uh, ideals, ideals that define a finite set. So an ideal that defines a finite set Then if I take, um, so then, um, you know, my ideal, uh, if, if I take the quotient, the qu if I take the quotient k of x1 up to xn now divided by <coughs> this, this ideal, <coughs> ix0 plus f0, <coughs> This is isomorphic to <coughs> the direct sum of O A N. So, 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 so let me I can write I can write it more clearly. K X one up to X N divided out by maximal ideal. So, okay, this is contained in. So what do I mean by this? <coughs> so you know, I finally get round to giving this a proper name. So I've got J. He's contain. He's con he contains. He contains this product of M I to the N I, and these guys are co-prime. So uh, you know, I had if I have m1 plus m2 is the whole ring, then also m1 to the n plus m2 to the n is the whole ring, <coughs> right? Because I just take uh, you know, for example, f plus g equals one with f in m1 <coughs> and g in m2, then also f, f plus g raised to some power 2n is also, is also equal to 1, right? And this is a sum of terms in m1 to the n and uh, m2 and g to the n. In fact, I, okay, so, um, so anyway, there's little, little tricks like this. If I take the quotient by this ring, so I could take the quotient separately by each of these rings and I get something slightly bigger. Right? So, so this thing here, you know, if I take, if I take, this is, so this, this thing here is a Taylor series 
of polynomials up to degree at ni minus 1. Right? And so th this is the same thing as O of affine space, the lo local ring now, not the, not the whole polynomial ring, the local ring uh, at aff affine, affine space at the point pi, divided by the maximum ideal, now, now the maximum ideal in the local ring. Right. So uh, I'm saying things, well, it's sort of clear to me anyway. I don't know, uh, I, don't, I don't think there's anything very difficult going on here. Right, so the, dim the, the dimension of this as a vector space over the field is just the number of monomials in the in, uh, number of possible monomials in the Taylor series. So it's just, again, some binomial coefficient. Okay, so what do I want to make of this? <coughs> so I want to identify, I want, now I want to identify this thing here, this quotient, with uh, uh, a ring which is contained in here. So uh, I'm doing, so, so I'm fix, I fix some m greater than or equal to m naught, greater than or equal to whatever we need, uh, and then I'm looking at homogeneous polynomials of degree x, uh, of degree m, ho ho this is homogeneous, x is in projective space, and then I'm dividing by fe times the same in degree m minus e. Right, and now I'm going to this quotient. So this qu quotient is one fixed vector space. The, the quotient entirely takes place where x0 is equal to 1. So this is supported on points pi with x0 x equals 1. <coughs> And so I say this quotient, uh, so now if I go to the this is a finite dimensional vector space, of dimension DE, <coughs> and it's also, uh, I, I say that this is equal to direct sum of O affine space divided out by this um, ix0 plus f0. Right? And that, this is the same thing, so, so the local, local ring at pi, this is summed over pi. <coughs> so, th so this thing is the same thing as ox divided out by f0. Sorry. So I could write this more clearly. This is the same thing as Ox at Pi divided by F0. Uh, equals. So, so this works as soon as m is greater than 0. So just fix some m greater than 0, and then set x0 equals 1. And so now, this, instead of being homogeneous polynomials of degree m in the homogeneous coordinate ring of x, it just becomes the affine coordinate ring of x0. So, so, so this thing here is sort of uh, contained in or equal to or something. k affine of x0 and then in degree less than or equal to m. <coughs> right, and this is still mapping surjectively to this, with kernel, the set of things that are multiples of e. Right, and so, I, so I'm going from the homogeneous coordinate ring to the affine coordinate ring. That's just this standard trick here, and it's okay because the, the kernel is finite, and I've got to some point where all of these maps are surjective. Right? And then I'm, uh, I'm using these kind of tricks 
to say actually everything is happening just locally and so I can work in the local ring at these, this, this finite set of points. Right, so this is our answer. Okay, and this is what I want this is what I wanted. So DE is the dimension of the quotient, and this is equal to sum over PI of the dimension of these the dimension of these local these local quotients. So if we define so so the only thing so if we define if we define multiplicity of intersection uh, of x naught of x with this Fe at point P by dimension uh, uh, dimension over the field K of local ring OXP divided by Fe then uh, d times z e is equal to the sum of multiplicity. So, so this is not really saying anything at all about w how to calculate these multiplicities or what these multiplicities are. It's just saying, so you know, here I've got some curve which is possibly singular, and I haven't. So I didn't, I didn't take any precautions when I made this definition. The only, the only precaution is that I want the F E here not to vanish on any component of X. So here I'm taking, here's, here's possibly my X. You know, it may sort of go on like this, and then here's maybe my F. E, and I have some you know, complicated curve, maybe with some very complicated singularity in space, I'm intersecting it and uh, I'm not pretending that I can understand or calculate what this number is, I'm, but I am claiming that I can define it. So I'm writing down this, this definition and uh, uh, you know, the, the argument I gave here said that this is a finite dimensional vector space, in fact it's a quotient of these local, local ta Taylor series, that's just because it's a zero dimensional set. Okay, so that's the, uh, so now I want to, now I want, n now assume, now assume x is a non-singular curve. Then, then I claim this intersection multiplicity is the valuation, is given by the valuation of Fe. So this is the this is the, uh, the the point I'm after, the point I really want. So then, for all p and x, O x and p is a discrete valuation ring. And if I take this, uh, I take this f. This uh, this uh, hyper hyper uh, I'm calling him Fe. <coughs> if I take this Fe, um, and I'm taking I do Fe divided by x1 x0. So this is the guy that's non-zero to the power of e. So this is in the function field of x. Right? Then he's got some valuation Vp of Fe over x naught to the e, and this is just equal to this dimension. This is equal to the dimension of O x p divided by uh, f e. Mm. So you know, here I set x naught equal to one. Right? <coughs> so so why is this true? This is because the valuation uh, because the uh, 
So OXP is a discrete valuation ring, and this means it's, uh, it's maximal ideal. So the maximal ideal at P is generated by a single element at XP, and um, uh, the valuation at P is given by is the number is the number new such that this uh, whatever this thing is f f e at x naught equals one uh, <coughs> is uh, x p to this power new times a unit. Right, and so uh, and so. Uh, so what do I want to say? Uh, here's OXP. Here is uh, the maximum ideal, which is uh, also the principal ideal XP. And then here's the maximum ideal squared, which is uh, XP squared, and so on. <coughs> so if I take OXP and then I divide it out by this thing here, I'm working at the local ring at the point P, I don't care what happens in section other points. Then it's the same, divided by this Fe at P, is the same thing as OXP divided out by this XP to the power of the valuation. Right? And this is equal to nu. <coughs> right? So the, uh, the, the, the quotient OXP by MP is just the the residue field, that's one dimensional as a field over k. The quotient by mp squared is two, two dimensional. So this is, uh, uh, or in other words, we can think of uh, OXP contains uh, you know any element f if element f is of the form a naught plus a one uh, xp plus a two xp squared a n xp to the n and then plus uh, terms let me take in minus one in terms of valuation. Right? And uh, so OXP divided by uh, maximum ideal P to the power of N, I got nu. Uh, is uh, the set of possible a naught, a one, a nu minus one. Right. So it's a vector space. Uh, that, that's not really true. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's not true. It's determined by uh, as a vector space is uh, a vector space. Based by uh, one, one xp, xp squared, xp to the new minus one. Okay, so this gives uh, this. Uh, um, you know, I, I sort of made, I did some slightly messy things here. But, uh, you know, I mean, this, it's not especially difficult to tidy this up. <coughs> so the conclusion is that, um, uh, so x in Pn a curve of degree d, and um, f a hypersurface of degree d, of degree E, F not containing X, then uh, X intersect F 
is DE points with multiplicity. And the multiplicity now is just equal to the valuation of P at, uh, at the valuation at P of F. Right? So I take my F. The F is a homogeneous form in, which in, in projective space, so I, I can't apply valuation directly to it. I divide out by this guy, which is a unit at, uh, at P. And so then I get something which is a, a rational function on X, and then I just calculate the valuation at, at the point. Right? So this is, um, this is some kind of answer to the Bezout's theorem. I said at the very beginning of the course, I said I'm not proving properly. So this is finally, uh, at least for a non-singular curve, this is now properly proved. Okay. The non-singular projective curve. So then uh, if F is in KC, then I take the divisor of F so I discussed this several times, and I'll discuss it several times more. Uh, this is the, the zeros of f with multiplicity minus the poles of f, and then I take the degree of this. This is just the sum, the sum of those numbers. Then this is zero. Right, so this is sum of p and c of the valuation at p of f <coughs> times p. And then, so this is zeros of f minus poles of f. And the degree is zero. Why? Because k of c is the function field. And this is um, uh, obtained from The homogeneous coordinate ring, K homogeneous of C, by doing by doing uh, F of some degree E divided by G of some degree E, where F and E, F E G E, homogeneous of the same degree. So at any point P, <coughs> I want to know what, so I, I say the divisor of F at any point is the divisor of, divisor, so then at any P, the divisor of F is the divisor of F minus the divisor of G. Right. So this means uh, locally, locally uh, with x not not equal, not, not equal to zero. I've got f divided by x not is uh, <coughs> x not divided to the same power e not is um, x p. Uh, you know to some multiplicity uh, valuation of p of f. Times a unit, and so, so sim similarly, for g, and then uh, f is f over g, and this is x p to the power of valuation at p of f minus the valuation of p of g. Right. So uh, you know, I may, I may not. It may not be specially convenient to choose f and e to be prime. So it might happen that f and e have both have. Uh, uh, zeros at xp, but uh, nevertheless, this uh, calculus works. This um, this algebra here works. Th these are, we're working inside a function field. They're all the guys are non-zero devices, so we're inside this field, and then uh, the multiplicity of 
This is just the, the rules for evaluation rate are giving us this for free. Right? And so uh, divisor of f is divisor of f minus divisor of g. And the degree of this is dE minus dE, not zero. Right. So, you know, I mean, this is in intuitive and nice and simple and so on, uh, but it's not obvious. And the second thing I need for riemann roch the second, you know, preliminary step I need for riemann roch is to say that there exists some nice big linear, some nice big vector spaces. So, uh, corollary two, uh, so now I'm going to take, uh, define, uh, so choose coordinates. So that uh, x0 equals 0, so that uh, does not contain x, does not contain c. So I've got this curve c, I just choose one of the, one of the coordinates so that it's not a hyperplane containing c. Right? And then define H or H naught to be the divisor of this X naught. So here's my curve C, and here is some H, and I'm, I'm taking this, uh, I'm defining the hyperplane, so this is a hyperplane section divisor. Right, then uh, if I do, um, I do riemann rock space, I do the riemann rock space L of M times H. <coughs> is, a, is a vector space, is a, a vector space of dimension. Um, do I want to say greater than or equal to? Uh, let me say greater than or equal to. Um, <coughs> uh, d, d m plus a constant. Well. <coughs> So where this, uh, where d is the degree. <coughs> so, you know, the, the, this vector space is really just the same thing as the homogeneous coordinate ring. Just the, the graded pieces of the homogeneous coordinate ring. So let's, uh, let's say, say this more, slightly more slowly. I've got C in Pn and I've got its uh, homogeneous coordinate ring. <coughs> and we know that uh, in degree m, this has dimension, this has dimension uh, whatever it is, um, uh, pm. So what is this? This is uh, homogeneous forms. <coughs> on Pn of degree m modulo those in Ix, those vanishing on x. Right, so if I take anything in there, so if I take, uh, I can take an element f in there and I can map this to f divided by x naught to the power of m. <coughs> then this is in L, uh, L of MH. So why? Because, uh, so if I do the divisor of this guy, F over X naught to the M, plus uh, M times H, this is just the divisor of F. <coughs> 
right? And this is certainly an effective device. So, so, so when I write this LMH, I say, right, your, your, this, is, this is supposed to be contained in K of C, so it's rational functions on C, and I say you guys are allowed to have poles of order M times whatever pole X0 has. So if I multiply now by X0 to the power of M, then I kill the pole. This is the only thing I'm saying here. So if I take these guys times X0 to the M, then I'm killing the pole. <coughs> and this is now regular. Right? And so each of these forms separately is an element of this vector space. But also this, uh, if you think about it, this, uh, if I write this K homogeneous C M and then I map it to L of C, L of M H, this is obviously an inclusion. Right, I'm taking F maps to F divided by X naught to the M. And if, uh, if, if this guy, if some, if some combination here uh, was zero, if some, if some element in here went to zero there, it means it was already zero uh, when it started. So this is mapping as a rational function on C. If it vanishes here as a rational, if this thing here vanishes as a rational function on C, it means the F, the original F here vanished on, on C as a homogeneous form. So uh, this, I this idea of having hyperplane section divisors is, uh, takes place throughout algebraic geometry. The, most of algebraic geometry, as I said at the very beginning, takes place in projective space. And the thing that, the thing that makes a projective variety different from an abstract variety or an abstract complex manifold is that it has these hyperplane sections. So uh, if x is a variety, uh, hyperplane section is the divisor of x where x is a linear uh, is a x is a linear coordinate right so uh, it, this is a good time to rem to remind you that uh, um, when I, when I, if I take f in k of x and I write the divisor of f, right, this is called a principal divisor, right, so the word principal here is really like the word principal ideal when you do number theory. So when you do, uh, you know, in this 19th century when the guys were trying to prove Fermat's last theorem, introduced, you know, the wanted rings of integers to be unique factorization domains, they eventually got to understanding that principal ideals were important, and so this is a principal divisor. It's the same as a print, it's given by, uh, it's generated everywhere locally by a single, a single function f. So there's this, this function f that gives the thing at every point, right? So the thing we proved is that the degree of the divisor of f is zero. Right? But the same, exactly the same idea is going to appear in several other places. So two divisors, and I hope you've done this in the homework, two divisors D and D primed are linearly equivalent if the difference, if D minus D primed is the divisor of F is a principal divisor. Right. So, you know, the, one of the ideas here is that if I take the hyperplane section, given the, one of these hyperplane sections, you can ask me, well, what happens if I took, took a different hyperplane section? So, uh, e.g., if... Uh, uh, so... Uh, if I take two different hyperplane section devices, then they're clearly <coughs> linearly equivalent. 
So if x, x prime, two different linear forms on Pn containing Pn containing my x, then if I write down, uh, uh, I can write down the divisor of x and the divisor of x prime. And the difference between them is the divisor of x over x prime. And this is principle. <clears throat> so for a lot of these Riemann Roch things, um, uh, so in the, uh, in the exercises, uh, you, you checked that d d prime d and d prime linearly equivalent. I'm always going to write this d linearly equivalent to d prime. So this is a slightly awkward point in algebraic geometry. There are many, many different equivalence relations. So it's better to be, to be safe. You uh, write. Uh, so then uh, L of d is isomorphic to L of d prime. Right, because this is the set of so so so. Let me let me assume here that if I if I write d minus d prime is the divisor of g with g in some non-zero some rational function in X, then uh, I can do multiplication by g takes L of d to L of d prime. So I set this on the last example sheet, on the last exercise sheet, and I hope you've thought about it, right? And so this means for most purposes, you know, in this, in this case, I was taking a hyperplane section. And of course, I don't care which hyperplane section, as long as it misses some finite set of points or whatever it, whatever it is. So here, if I take two different x naughts, I get two different spaces of divisors here. So if uh, Fm, if Fm uh, hypersurface degree m, then uh, Fm over x naught is uh, to the power of m is a rational function. So divisor of f, divisor of fm is linearly equivalent to uh, m times the h I defined here. <coughs> okay, so uh, let me uh, perhaps leave it here. And uh, so I, I hope that you've done the exercise on the example sheet because, uh, uh, you know, quite a lot of the Quite a lot of the tricky little proof in uh, Riemann Rock is actually uh, contained there. So I uh, can leave this for until four o'clock.